Before we jump into today's hot stinking mess, be sure to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, watermelon licorice, and chicken and waffles popcorn. Now, let's get into some of the reasons people can't stand Oprah. During a 1985 appearance on The Tonight Show, the late Joan Rivers criticized Oprah for her weight gain. But you went into beauty contests. They tell me you're a beauty contest winner. Yeah, I'm the 50 pounds ago or so. So how'd you gain the weight? I ate a lot. <laughs> you're a pretty girl and you're yeah. single. You must lose the weight. I'm going to. Although Oprah laughed it off, it rubbed her the wrong way. She and Joan were never cool after that, and the feeling was apparently mutual. In 2010, Jones' close friend told the National Enquirer that Oprah was at the top of Jones' hate list. The friend said Joan thought Oprah was the biggest phony in the world. She also called her cold, and despite her persona of being caring and giving, Joan was convinced Oprah only cared about herself. Joan also reportedly questioned Oprah's sexuality. In her autobiography, which we've linked for you in the description box, Joan wrote that Oprah's longtime boyfriend, Stedman Graham, was her beard. She also came for Oprah's weight again and said, One day she weighs 140, two days later she's being fitted for a boat cover. Oprah never got over everything Joan had to say, and she couldn't understand why the comedian came at her so hard. According to the New York Post and author Kitty Kelly's 2010 biography about Oprah, her family called the media mogul phony for exaggerating what happened during her childhood and making up lies about being dirt poor and abused to boost her ratings. Oprah's cousin Catherine claimed Oprah lied about not receiving new dresses or dolls as a child. She also said Oprah wasn't telling the truth when she said she had two cockroaches as pets. Catherine went on to describe Oprah as being relatively spoiled as a little girl, which completely contradicts Oprah's own recollection of her childhood. Catherine said when she questioned Oprah about the fabrications, Oprah reportedly replied, that's what people want to hear, because the truth is boring. Oprah's father, Vernon, also called her out, but said God and Oprah both know the truth about her upbringing. He also blamed Oprah's friendship with Gail King for the strained relationship he had with his daughter. He even referred to Gail as a dirt hog and a street heifer. Yikes! In 2013, Oprah made headlines when she alleged a Swiss sales assistant wouldn't show her a luxury bag because the woman assumed she couldn't afford it since she was black. And she said... No, no, no. You don't want to see that one. You want to see this one because that one will cost too much. You will not be able to afford that. And you already know the backlash was swift and furious. The saleswoman eventually spoke out to defend herself. She said she did show Oprah the bag. The woman also stated she felt helpless because Oprah was so powerful and she had turned the world against her. Conservatives didn't believe Oprah's version of events at all. They also noticed that Oprah's allegations conveniently coincided with the promotion of her new movie, The Butler, which was about the civil rights movement. To be able to make out with Oprah, to have, op to have love scenes with her and those Tiggo biddies, I mean, um... <laughs> <laughs> Oprah eventually made a statement by telling reporters during the premiere of The Butler, I'm really sorry that it got blown up. I purposefully did not mention the name of the store. I'm sorry that I said it was Switzerland. People wondered if she was really discriminated against, why would she apologize? And why did she wait to do it at the premiere of her new movie? Hmm. With real racism and discrimination happening on a daily basis, people were upset Oprah would allegedly manufacture a story in order to get people to watch a movie. TMZ alleged the incident wasn't actually about race and it was more about Oprah being upset that the employee didn't recognize her. The hip hop community has long had a problem with Oprah since many artists have accused her of not supporting the genre. In 2006, Ice Cube told FHM Magazine he'd never been on Oprah's talk show despite being involved in three projects pitched to her. He explained how his barbershop co-stars Cedric the Entertainer and Eve had been invited to chat with her, but he hadn't. Ice Cube pointed out that while Oprah has had all types of unsavory characters on her show, like people who have harmed women and children, he wondered why he wasn't good enough. He said, maybe she's got a problem with hip hop. 
In 2008, Ice Cube went on conversations with Michael Eisner and said, I've gotten this far without Oprah, so I'm not worried about it. Ludacris also publicly attacked Oprah for how she treated him when he appeared on her show while promoting the movie Crash. During the segment, Oprah seemed more focused on criticizing Luda for his rap lyrics and his use of the N-word. She was able to say what she said, and then I, I had my rebuttal, and when I saw the final show, her, her comments were in yeah, there. Right, was in there, but yours wasn't in there. And yeah, mine weren't in there. When the cameras turned off, Oprah reportedly pulled him into a room and went in on him some more about the derogatory language in his music. In an interview with GQ magazine, Ludacris said, It was like being at someone's house who doesn't really want you there. It was already uncomfortable. It's not just rappers that have spoken out about Oprah. In 2019, Monique revealed that Oprah blindsided her by inviting her family onto the show, in spite of the fact that Monique told Oprah she didn't want her toxic family to be showcased on TV. After Toni Braxton's 1998 interview about her money problems and bankruptcy, Toni said Oprah was so freaking mean. She felt like Oprah was reprimanding and belittling her for her spending habits. During the interview, Tony wiped away tears as Oprah tore into her. While Tony eventually forgave Oprah, fans didn't. Looking back, they said Oprah was trying to humiliate Tony by lecturing and scolding her instead of being sympathetic. Some commenters also accused Oprah of exploiting Tony's pain to boost her ratings. When Oprah opened up her South African Leadership Academy boarding school for girls in 2007, it sounded like a good idea at first. Founded with over $40 million of her own money, Oprah stated the school was inspired by her own disadvantaged childhood. She was looking forward to providing education and leadership opportunities to gifted girls in grades 8 through 12. Less than a year later, six of the 152 students who had been personally selected by Oprah to attend the institution came forward to accuse the school's dorm matron of inappropriate behavior including physical abuse. She was later cleared of charges. Two years later, seven students were suspended for engaging in inappropriate acts with each other and for sexually harassing a classmate. And then in 2011, a body of a newborn was found in one of the students' bags. Parents of students complained of not having enough access to their children, and they compared the school's restrictions on visits, phone calls, and email contact to prison rules. Apparently, the parents were only permitted to see their children during a two-hour visit once per month. Oprah reportedly spoke to concerned parents, but had no desire to change the structure of the visitation schedule. At this point, there's no doubt that Oprah will continue to court controversy and secure the bag while doing so. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below. And thanks for watching RRG.